All right, coaches, welcome to Speed Kills Football. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Today we have Coach Brian Herman with us. He's going to be talking about utilizing pods within your practice plan with the sweep and the trap. Uh, Coach Herman coached under uh, Jerry Vance at Liberty Hill, where he, uh, as an assistant, they once stayed over there in 06, 07. He's been the head coach at three different schools. He's currently at Marble Falls, which is a 5A Division II in Texas. And uh, Coach has some DVDs through Championship Productions on uh, the Texas Slot T. So you guys can check that out uh, after the video if you feel so inclined to do so. Uh, so without further ado, Coach Herman, you can take it away. Great. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm glad y'all are here. Uh, good to talk football here in January. Um, Hope y'all are having an awesome day. Just want to go over a couple of things real quick. Uh, this is our second year in Marble Falls. Uh, we took over a program that uh, has been running spread for a very long time. And uh, there are some unique challenges that go with uh, transitioning kids from a spread offense uh, to a slot T or any, any type of power running game. Uh, if, you, if you're a wing T or power I, uh, what we talk about today, you can transition or, or translate to your offense. This isn't going to be necessarily a slot T talk. Uh, it's going to be more about some practice organization that we've been doing. Um, you know, it's, uh, we, we made some changes this year in our practice format. We did three big things differently this year that we have done in the past. Uh, number one was we moved to morning practices, which we all seem to really enjoy. And of course that, that, you know, you may be in a place where you can't do that, but that's something we did uh, we also changed our practice scripts up a little bit to where we don't go, um, you know, 60 minutes offense, 60 minutes defense, and then special teams. Uh, we we go back and forth. We do, you know, 20 minutes one way, 20 minutes another way, jump into some special teams. We try to mimic a little bit more about, uh, you know, how the game flows, offense, defense, special teams, intermix throughout practice. And I think that's been good to us. Uh, I think it keeps our kids fresh. You know, the old way of doing it, the way we used to do it was an hour one side of the ball, hour the other side of the ball, and then special teams, wherever you choose to put them, either at the beginning, middle, or end. Um, but what we, what we found was that a lot of those primary offensive or defensive guys would get kind of stale and bored uh, when they were on the other side of the ball. So we really thought we got a lot out of our kids uh, moving back and forth in and out of offense, defense, and special teams. So those were two big changes. Uh, but I think the thing that I want to talk about today more than anything was our pod system. Um, I want to give credit. I see Coach Draper's on here. Uh, Coach Draper, we were lucky enough to hire him. We worked together at Liberty Hill uh, years ago, and uh, he was uh, head coach at Edna. And uh, we got to steal him. We got to steal him and bring him here to Marble Falls this year. And he brought the pod system with him. Uh, and I think it's huge. I'm sure some of you use half line and, and different things uh, to, to work on your you know, point of attack. But what we use now is this pod system that Coach Draper brought to us. And it, it's really good. And, and when I start talking about it, I'm going to show you a PowerPoint, show you the structure of it. Um, I might, if I can figure out all the technological stuff, I'll try to show you some film. Uh, of our stuff in action. I don't have practice film of our pods, uh, but I, I think the PowerPoint and the discussion will, will give you the idea of what we're trying to do. Um, if you're lucky enough to have enough kids and enough quality uh, capable coaches to handle it, you can do it spread out. Or you know, if you're limited in the number of kids or the number of coaches that you have, you could do it segmented, meaning that you could do um, strong side or, or you know, right or left, however you, you break up your guys. We do it a strong side, a quick side, and then our inside, uh, you know, the guard centers, fullback and quarterback. So I'll show you all that, but you can you can do it either all at the same time, or you could do 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 10 minutes there uh, to get the same effect. Um, we're lucky enough, like I said, to have great coaches and, and enough number of kids that we can do all three at the same time. So if I can figure out how to do this PowerPoint <clears throat> sharing the screen, uh, I will show you uh, what I the think PowerPoint I looks like. Coach, you should be good. So where I, this is my first but time. The bottom right? in the middle is going to say share screen with a little yep. arrow pointing up. Okay. Then you got to click on desktop one, Coach. Desktop one. Yeah, when the little white box did it pop up yet? Yeah, I got a box. I got screen. 
Yours might say something different. There you, you go. See it? Good. Do you yes, see? Right. Okay. All right. So let me go to the slideshow. Start from the beginning. All right. So uh, <laughs> our our we use a slot T formation. So what you're seeing right here is our quick side. That's our quick tackle, our tailback, and our swing man. Uh, we flip our lines. You know, we run a slot T and we flip a right, a left. Uh, and different other formations. But uh, in this set, this would be considered our right set. Um, and we're going to work our point of attack here. And, and it, it says traps and sweeps, but guys, you can you can use, you know, whatever it is, if you're, if you're a wing or an eye or, you know, double tight, whatever you are, you can you can break it up however you want and work whatever plays you want. We're, we're talking <coughs> traps and sweeps, but, but on here on this says 449 toss, 235, 447 G. Uh, but the big one right here would be our buck sweep to our quick side. That's our 349. Um, again, this is our quick tackle, our slot back, and our swing man. And so what we do here is we have the you know the three active players and and then defenders. You can use three, four, two, however many defenders you want to put there and move them around. As it says, move them around early in the year so you give them a whole bunch of different looks. You know we typically go about. Uh, our segments usually run, I think, four minutes a piece, and we go about four or five periods of this. And um, and we just try to give as many looks as we possibly can. The benefit to us with this versus a half line or a full go is this is where we're going to be most physical in practice, um, where it's controlled and you don't get as many people rolled up. You know, when, when we're doing a full – full offense versus defense there's you know so many bodies in a tight space running the slot to your or a double tight uh offense where you're running a power running game you've got your backside guys there's a good chance people get rolled up from the backside so this is a real good way for us to focus on the point of attack uh and, and get live and get physical and there's less chance of injury and you get a lot more repetitions um you know if we were doing a full line situation and we're running 349 or 449 toss or, or any of these plays that you see listed here uh, the backside is just working scoops, you know, play after play after play, uh, and, and they can get lazy. So this is a good opportunity for them to focus on the point of attack, less chance of getting rolled up, uh, and get a lot of repetitions in a short amount of time. Again, you know, we do it where we do these three different pods all congruently at the same time. And um, again, you, you don't have to do that. You can do it, you know, 10 minutes with this, 10 minutes with another one, 10 minutes with the third. Uh, we move our defenders around a lot early. Then once you get into game planning and you get into your season and you kind of have an idea of how you think people are going to line up to you, uh, you can set the defenses, you know, A, B, C. We use A, B, C, D uh, for our defense. We'll be in defense A uh, and, and move guys around a little bit and then defense B and then maybe bring a blitz or two, you know, those kind of things. So however you want to structure it, this is just how we set up our quick side. Uh, some people call it a weak side. Some people call it left side. Again, we flip ours, so this would be our, our right set in a quick side pod. So now all we do is when we, we go, you know, about halfway through and then we flip it, now we're in left. So now the tackle is on the inside. Oh, he's still on the inside, but he's on the left. He's to our right, but we're in the left set. Uh, tailback is to his right, and swing man is, is extended outside of him. Again, I don't want to get into a whole lot of slot T stuff. You know, you guys can ask me questions later about that you can email me or call me or whatever um, about slot t stuff i'm just trying to show you some things we do in practice that made us better this year this was you know the quick side to us was was where we struggled the most in our transition from spread to slot t 349 our first year was was not very good at all and if we don't have 349 if we don't have the the weak side or quick side buck sweep uh it really struggles it makes our whole offense struggle so uh, we had to do something different to get better at that, and it, it showed this year for us. So this is our quick side pod. Again, this is now in the left set. I'm going to go ahead and move over to our right set strong side, and I'm, I don't have the left set. It doesn't really matter. Just imagine flipping it over. Again, some of you all don't flip your line, so it really doesn't matter. This could be your right set, your strong side, uh, however you want to call it. We, this would be our R set, letter R set. Uh, we typically are in A formation. If you look behind me on the whiteboard, that should be the A formation. Uh, but this would be where we extend our halfback from our backfield into a strong side wing. Mm -hmm. And so now we're in our right set. And once again, we can move the defenders around to give us different looks. Uh, as you see, it says work 234, 236, 328, 
428 toss, 436 hammer. Uh, 436 hammer is another play that Coach Draper brought to us that was really good this year. Um, but this would be where we'd work our strong side sweeps, all of our down blocks, you know, working, trying to get our guys used to, you know, gap penetrators. Again, this is all relating to the last one also. Gap penetrators, reading defenses, guys that are going to, you know, play games up front and do different things. The big thing is in the last slide and this slide right here is we're really talking about, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but we really are, are focusing on our down blocks, you know, flat down the line, cutting off penetration, not allowing any gap penetration. And we, we marry our halfback to our strong end to where he really just rides the hip of the strong end on this path right here and picking up anything. If this, if this guy, if this eight, nine technique, if he tries to slam through the gap, we're gonna carry him with us. If he stays wide, then we're going to, you know, we're not going to mess with him. We're not going to turn out or, or pause right here. We're going to stay on our path. Uh, like the last slide, we would call it railroad. We like to imagine three train, three freight trains coming all at the same angle and not allowing anybody through those three train tracks. So we're going hard inside, hard inside, hard inside. And again, I'm talking about the sweep or the G, you know, 434 G is a big play for us this would be blocked exactly the same way. Strong tackle blocks down, strong end blocks down, halfback rides the strong end on a path to that linebacker. So 434 G, that'd be a belly G for, for you know, just general terms, belly G to the strong side. Uh, 328 is our strong buck sweep. These are all down block, down block, down block. All, like I said, in freight train or railroad is what, kind of the key term we use is railroad to remind them hard inside, hard inside, hard inside. And we don't want to get distracted. We don't want to turn out on this guy. If we if we try to say, if we make contact, we're going to stay with him. But at the same time, we don't want to like have him brush our shoulder and then all of a sudden we stop and turn. We want to be like a missile on that train track hard inside. If he comes off our edge, then it's going to be the guard's responsibility to pick him up. So quick side and strong side, <clears throat> excuse me, both working the buck sweep to their side, as, you know, as we talked about with the uh, with with uh, the introduction, is traps and sweeps. But again, if you want to work your power game, you know we can take our halfback here and move him back behind the strong tackle into our what our A set would be, and we can work our power game uh, with our halfback leading, fullback coming off. Again, the same concept is we want to have uh, as few bodies as possible, max amount of reps, so that we get better at the point of attack. Now, this is the fun one for me. Uh, this one we like to do under a cage or a trap shoot. Um, and we'll have our quick guard, center, and strong guard. Again, it could be your left guard, right guard, however you want to term your guys if you don't flip. Uh, again, we flip. So if we're an A left or R left or any left formation, our strong guard would be here and our quick <clears throat> guard would be here. But for us, uh, this is a right set. And we're going to work different looks with – three to four different defenders, sometimes five, if we want to put a linebacker and another uh, defensive tackle here, and we want to work our quick traps, our fullback traps. This is going to be where we spend a lot of time on our fullback trap work uh, with our fullbacks hitting, you know, to one, one A gap and then S-ing, we call it S-ing back. Uh, so if we're running what we call three, 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 or if we're going to run a fullback trap where he hits the strong A gap, he's going to S back to this side reading the blocks, the down, the, the back blocks and the trap blocks to where we're hitting here tight. And again, under the cage, it makes sure our guys stay nice and low. And it fast. <laughs> awesome. Um, so we work both right and left traps or, or strong and quick traps, however you want to, you know, phrase it for yourself. And we give them lots of different looks. We'll put them in double ones, uh, double no shades. We'll, we'll give them you know, both sides covered, you know, all, all three men covered. Um, and we use what we call a TNT. This is our TNT call. Uh, if, if we were running uh, 333 right here, 333, uh, we would call this a TNT call because the pulling guard and the center are both covered. So we want to block back with the center, block back with the guard or the quick guard, excuse me, and then pull the strong guard. So that would be a TNT call. It started off where TNT was based off of if all three recovered, but as we got into it, we realized really it's it's the center and the pulling guard. It doesn't matter if this guard is covered or not. TNT means we're all blocking back and pulling and trapping. So this would be our trap sweep pod, uh, focusing on our quick traps, our fullback traps, 
332 uh, and 333 again you know fullback quick traps and uh, different a whole bunch of different looks as many looks as we can give them here uh, in this time period then uh, that's the same one if we give you know if we flip it over and give them a different look then we go into this part and this is probably my favorite part um, this is our sweep portion with our guards and our fullback because what we'll do here is uh, by the way I got to give thanks to coach Homan for putting this PowerPoint together coach Homan is our offensive coordinator uh, he did a really good job putting this together. We use tackle wheels uh, as linebackers and stabbing outside linebackers. So what we do here is again, we're under the cage. You can't you have to imagine a, a trap shoot or a cage here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to have our guards come out and kick out a moving target, kick out on the strong side and seal a moving target inside linebacker scraping to the ball here. Uh, tackle wheels are really good for us for a lot of reasons but we're going to kick out here and seal here. So this would be if we we're working three, two, eight strong side buck sweep or eight hole reverse. That's a, a, a strong side sweep that we run. I could, I've got film to show if I can get that to work. Um, so our strong sweeps, we would go here. Strong guard would pull kick out here, a moving target. Our quick guard would pull here and, and cut a, a moving target here, the inside linebacker scraping to the ball. And again, we're going to have our center working on getting low and cutting off this gap penetrator here. So that'd be three, two, eight or eight hole reverse. And then we'd flip it over. Let me see if I have that. Yeah, we flip it over and, and work the other side now where the quick side or the left guard is gonna pull, turn up and kick out another moving target. And our strong guard is gonna pull and seal that linebacker scraping. And the cool thing about the tackle wheels is, you know, you get a coach or a player that, uh, that gives them different angles, different looks. You know, if you have a, a stabbing uh, outside linebacker, you could turn into what we call a Delaware. I don't want to get too deep into that, but maybe the quick guard has to cut him right here at the line of scrimmage. And then the backside guard has to pull and wrap around that to get his seal. Uh, so it's almost like a double seal or a log and a seal. Uh, we also do, you see where it says goal line. If we have, um, my screen looks a little different than yours, but if, uh, let me go back a, a slide. Let's say we have this right here where we've got a strong side, a gap guy uh, that we're just having a tough time uh, dealing with. Let's say we can't scoop him or the fullback's having a tough time cutting him. What we'll do is we'll leave our, if we call goal line, uh, typically it's with when we have two a gap players, but let's just say this is a dude since I don't have another guy here. If this is a stud and we just, we cannot get him uh, taken care of either by a, a scoop or zone here by the center or cutting with the fullback, uh, we'll, we'll call goal line. And when we call goal line, then that guard stays and blocks here. Okay. Now the center has to block back because what happens typically on our regular sweeps is our fullback is an A gap. Uh, he has A gap responsibility. So if the fullback has A gap responsibility, we call goal line, we're fixing to tell the fullback he is now the lead guard. So now he's going to get up into the line. He's going to become our kickout guard, our lead guard, our kickout right here. And that strong guard stays and takes up, takes his a gap responsibility. So the center would then block back. So we'd have a block back, block back, lead and kick action with our fullback. That's what we call goal line. So if we were to goal line this, he would stay, he would block back, fullback would kick, and that quick guard would come around and and seal. So we give them all these different looks. Now, if we go the same thing over here, let's imagine, let's imagine that you've got another defender here in this A gap. We can do the same thing here and have that quick guard stay. Okay. So that quick guard's going to block here and that center is going to block back. Now the fullback again is now the kick out block, the lead guard, and then the strong guard comes around and seals. We can do this with either two guys in A gaps or just a really tough a gap player that we can't block and we need some help with, uh, or you know maybe the, maybe it's this look, maybe it's a, a 13 look where it's a one to the strong side and you got a three technique over here, uh, but we've got a blitzing linebacker that's giving us fits. So we can still do the same thing. We can call goal line here and that center can block back, that quick guard can pick up that blitzing linebacker and we still get the kick and the seal. So if we go back, and I'll forgive me if this is too quick. Um, so if we go back 
and say, look, okay, so we're going to work this set for a few minutes and then flip it. And then we're going to work this set for a few minutes and flip it. And then we're going to go to these guys for a few minutes and then do different looks there with traps and sweeps. Again, we do this all simultaneously. We do it all at the same time uh, because we have three really good line coaches and a few really, and uh, our backs coaches are really good that we can break them up and send them to different places. Uh, our staff has been amazing doing this and we're able to do this, like I said, all in about a, a four or five period segment. Uh, and it just, it's made us so much better at our point of attack, our, our angles, our, our first steps, uh, staying low under the cage, coming around and, and throwing. And that's the other thing I want to talk about. When we use these tackle wheels, I mean, we, we're big on these guys. I mean, they're throwing their bodies into these tackle wheels. We're trying to simulate cutting and, and, and cutting the seal block and those type of things. So let's see. All right, so that's, I wanna, I wanna keep sharing, but I wanna switch to a little bit of film if I can. Are there any questions on that while I'm looking at trying to figure out how to do the film part? Coach, do you have them set up to take questions or how are we doing this? Coach, whenever, um, whenever you get done, they can ask you questions. Oh, they okay. can use the message bar to uh, send in messages as we go. And when I see them, I'll let you know. Uh, okay, so so it might be better than just to show a little bit of film and then and yeah, then stop at some point yes, and then sir. open it up. Make sure we get the film in in time. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'll, I'll show a little bit of film again. This is slot T, guys. Um, you know, and and some of what you see is going to be you know not just our basic A formation. There's going to be some different formations, different motions, and things. Uh, some of that's in the video series. Uh, some of it's more of uh, just stuff we've done throughout the years. Uh, Pretty soon here, I'm about to go see Coach Wash there up in the corner of my screen. Uh, we're going to go out to uh, Oregon, uh, Port Angeles, and talk to them about some slot T. So there's there's a lot more to it that we can visit about at another time. Uh, but let me see if I can figure out how to show some film here. All right, so this one here, if you look at the top, this is what we call, this would be an R set. This is our, well, it's technically our right. I don't know why it says our left. This is our R right. We're going to do a little bit of motion and we're going to hit a quick trap, three, three, three. Okay. So in this case, uh, we're going to, we're going to block back and we're going to trap with our strong guard here and run our fullback quick trap, R three, three, three. We're in a four point stance across the board. Actually, we're a four point stance everywhere with the exception of our uh, our wing and our slot during a three point stance. But guys, we couldn't have done this. Well, I say we couldn't have. We had trouble doing this last year. Uh, transitioning from spread to slot T was, was definitely a challenge. There you go. The biggest thing that we work on is just being as fast as we possibly can. Uh, we miss a lot of blocks. I'm sure everybody that's on the screen or on, on the video today has missed blocks and get frustrated watching film. Uh, sometimes it's embarrassing to show film because you don't always get the best looks. Uh, this was our last game, second round of the playoffs. Uh, this team ended up going a couple more rounds. You see that three technique comes running up field and we trap underneath them. We don't even get a trap, but because of our good angle by our strong guard, uh, the guy's out of position because he ran up field. So that's an example of one of our quick traps. Here's another quick trap. This is the trap to the other side. We're in our right again. Excuse me, we're in our left. I don't know why it's, yeah our left and we're going to do a little uh, slot back motion to the strong side. Now our strong tackle is supposed to pick up that middle linebacker here, but he misses. This was actually early in the year. This is our backup fullback. He's a, he probably should be a guard. He's a little butterball. Excuse the pink socks. This was our, uh, 
Cancer Awareness Night. But the bottom line is we were working on trying to get our angles and just working on being as fast and low as we can. I'm still not pleased with how high we are. Uh, again, this is early in the year now, but a good surge off the ball there between our center and our strong guard. So this is a, a nose, we've got a, an even front. So our, our center and our strong guard are gonna double team and try to carry him into the backside linebacker. They do a good job of that. Better job here, our guard is coming and, and taking a good angle. You see the helmet placement right there as he makes contact on the trap. These are pretty good on our splits here. Some of our stances are a little bit not where I want them to be, but the, the splits are good. <clears throat> this is our quick side buck sweep. This is where we spent most of our time the a year ago, our first year here. Uh, we averaged, well, I don't want to tell what the average was, but it was very poor. Uh, we did not do a very good job of this play right here. Uh, we got better at it this year, and I think that's a, a testament to the pods that we did that Coach Draper brought with him. Hey, Coach, you're at the 10-minute mark. Okay, I'll show just a couple more, and then I'll, uh, I'll stop right. so we can get some questions. Same play. So this would be a strong side sweep for us. This isn't a buck sweep. Uh, we're really cheating here. This is not exactly how I want us to be, but uh, this is a strong side sweep. Again, one of those plays that we're gonna work on a strong side pod. A lot of misdirection on this play. Uh, this is one of our favorite plays. But you see the guards getting out picking up the kick out, picking up a seal right there. And again, I'm not trying to necessarily highlight slot T here. This is just stuff that we do with our offense, um, it, but you can do it with your offense as well. Let me see if I can get out of here. Uh, how do I go back to our regular? You can probably just. Uh, X out of your huddle. Just X coach. out of it. Okay. I think so. Can you see me? Or do you see a black screen? No. Am I back on? Okay. Uh, I'll be happy to take questions. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can reach out to me again. I tried to put my email here on the whiteboard, uh, but the problem was. When I wrote it, it was backwards. So I don't know if it's like, if this is a left formation or a right formation for you, I, I don't know. So, but my email, if you want to write it down, are my initials B J H 213 at gmail.com. So if you have specific questions or aren't able to get on today, you know, with, I guess we only have eight, nine minutes left. Uh, if you have other questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them or we can, you know, talk on the phone or whatever. So, Coach, if you want to open it up, I'm happy to answer questions. Any questions guys you have, uh, go ahead and ask Coach. I have one about, uh, do y'all sugar huddle at all, Coach? So what we do, and it's based on game planning, um, you know, we played Brenham in the first round of the playoffs and we were a three touchdown underdog to them. Um, super athletic. We stayed in the huddle as long as we possibly could. And then we break the huddle and we sprint to the ball and we try to snap the ball as fast as possible. So what we'll do in practice for breaking and snapping, what we'll do is we'll break the huddle at the appropriate time, whether it's a, you know, late in the count or early in the count, if we're trying to go fast, sometimes we actually go no huddle. We have a wristband uh, system that we use for our two minute drill. And we'll do that middle of the, of the game. But typically in practice, when we break the huddle, I'll just start yelling three, two, one. And I want the ball snapped by the end of the one count. So uh, from from breaking the huddle to snap, we're trying to get it as close to three seconds or less as possible. 
Um, but based on uh, who we're playing, sometimes we want to go faster, sometimes we want to go slower. In the Brenham game, we held the ball for 33 and a half minutes, uh, leaving them only you know, 14 and a half minutes of possession. We had 41 snaps in the first half. They only had 10 snaps, offensive snaps in the first half. So it, it, that's kind of based on game plan, but uh, we will get in a tight huddle and, and stay in there and, and, and talk about the play until we're ready to break. Awesome. Anybody else? I think everybody's muted, huh? Or can they unmute themselves? They can unmute themselves, Coach. Okay. But Coach, I had a quick question about, um, you know, what plays you're working with each pod. Um, 447G, is that pretty much 434, 434G to the opposite side? It, it would, yes. Yes and no. It, it's going to be really the – the best equivalent would be um, 349 goal line because, well, I say that, minus the backside seal. Uh, so basically the point of attack on uh, 349 goal line would be 447G. Everybody on the on the quick side is blocking hard inside, hard inside, hard inside. Fullback is kicking. Uh, and a full, uh, excuse me, yeah, fullback is kicking. And that's pretty much, it, it's a G, yeah, it's a belly G to the quick side, yes. Okay. Anybody else, coaches? I see another Coach Herman on the screen here. I don't know. Got a question, Coach. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Oh, okay. Um, with the quick uh, snap from the huddle, do you ever get officials consistently calling you for not being set for a full count? I think we may have had it one time this year. Um, Liberty Hill is, is probably the best at it, um, or I should say uh, – presses or pushes the limit the most. Uh, we're, we're not quite there yet. Again, we're in year two. Um, I'm not looking forward to getting a lot of calls that way, but I would like to speed it up a little bit more. But yeah, we had one call this year. We get warned a lot. We've only got call points, but we get warned a lot. Yes. The nice thing about the way we do it is it's really hard for defenses to get aligned. Um, if we want to run a tackle over uh, or a different formation, uh, if we can get up there and snap it before they recognize it, that gives us an advantage. Um, and then again, we also have some quick motions and, and a, a, a delay count or, you know, we go on what we call on two, it's not really on two, but, uh, you know, not the first sound. And so, uh, you know, it, it, it can keep the defense on their heels. I guess everybody wants to wait and email me questions, huh? Coach, uh, you, you mentioned you mentioned splits. I know, I know you talked about that in your video, but uh, just while I got you here, could you go over what those splits were again? Sure, sure. Our, our guards and tackles are going to be two-foot splits. Our tight ends, well, our strong end, it'll be a three-foot split. Uh, and then our swing man, which is our weak side, uh, slot side, however you want to term it, uh, he's at six feet. Now, I, I was going to mention that. Thank you for bringing it up. When we run certain plays, we'll move guys around. Um, obviously, if we want to run a quick trap and uh, we want to run a strong side trap, we may have our strong guard cheat out a little bit to give us a bigger A gap to trap into um, and, and so vice versa with the quick side. So we may move our guards out a little bit on traps. We may move our swing man in uh, a little bit on if we're running our quick side buck sweep, our 349. Our swing man may go from a six foot split down to a four and a half foot split. Um, sometimes we'll run a, a quick side sweep and we'll motion that slot back out of there. And so he'll leave. So we'll have our swing man cheat down even more. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll move our splits around based on plays. Sure. Thank you. Coach Draper, what did I miss? Um. I was going to touch a little bit more on the uh, organization part of it at Edna. When I was there, we only had 55 kids out total for football. So when we do our pods or we did our pods, it would be JV and varsity. And uh, we would primarily stick with the varsity, but the JV would also be getting reps at the same time. So it'd be like three reps for every one JV cat. And if a JV uh, kid messed up, we would just move, you know, move on. They would learn more by osmosis. Varsity, we would repeat and redo. But, but 
especially with the uh, centers and fullbacks and quarterbacks, since you're you know primarily going against uh, a shield or whatever, we would rep varsity one, varsity two, then JV, then varsity one, varsity two, then JV, and then just and like I said, we would repeat for the varsity kids if they messed up, but not so much for the J, for the JV cats. So yeah. learn osmosis. So every kid in the program was doing it. Now, you know, Coach Herman also touched on coaches and availability. Under a minute, yeah. You could only, you had, you really only need three coaches to do this drill, you know, one for each station. Um, and then you could rotate each one as well, too. Um, but other than that, I mean, Coach, I think you pretty much hit on them. You know, like I said, the beauty of these is, is that as a line coach, I can, I can show my guys different looks I think they're going to see that week, stunts, uh, so on and so forth in a controlled area where you're not worried about people getting tangled up or somebody coming from the backside or anything. You're under a minute, Coach. Thank you, Coach Draper. Well, Coach Storer, I really appreciate it. This Man, is thank a lot you for coming on, guys. <clears throat> and I look, I look forward to hearing some emails. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it, Coach. Uh, Thank you. Remember, Coach has those uh, Texas Slot T DVDs with uh, championship productions. Uh, if y'all more interested in the Texas Slot T stuff, y'all can check that out right there. And uh, we got a defensive guy coming on tonight at five with Coach Neil Martin, uh, Ben Mouton from uh, Southside, the defensive coordinator. He's going to be talking about three, four blitz packages. So. <laughs>